What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and I'm super excited to continue our series on Garry Kasparov's repertoire with the Sicilian Nightorf. The opening itself starts off with e4, c5, knight f3, d6, and after both sides exchange pawns off the board, we see knight f6 developing the knight and putting some pressure on that e4 pawn. And after knight c3, we see the knight orf with a6. Now in the first video, we went over how Kasparov best responded to bishop e3 with the English attack, a very aggressive option for white. However, in this video, we'll be going over another aggressive option for white with bishop c4. This is considered the Sozin attack or Fisher Sozin attack. And really what white is trying to do here is activate this bishop on c4 and put some pressure on this f7 pawn. Kasparov in this situation always played the move e6 and after bishop b3, b5. The purpose of b5 is really two-sided. First off, there are now b4 ideas always in the air and it also creates a potential b7 square for this bishop where it will be very active attacking that pawn on e4. Here we usually see castles from white and after the simple move bishop e7 really there's two options for white here that we're going to go over in this video. One of them being queen f3 and the other being f4. Now with f4 really what white is trying to do here is create some space on the king side and also prepare either e5 or f5. Here Kasparov simply castles and now there's two moves, either e5 or a3. Now white would like in a perfect world to play f5, but this doesn't work because now black can play b4 attacking that knight on c3 and next we'll push the pawn to e5 attacking the other knight and then take that pawn off the board with knight takes e4. So needless to say, one of the options is a3. And now that b4 is protected, white is threatening to play f5. So here Kasparov went to bishop b7, not sitting around waiting for white to attack, but trying to find counterplay. And now with f5, we can simply push with e5, and after knight d e2, just develop with knight bd7, and let's just say a move like knight g3, looking to defend that e4 pawn. We see rook c8, and after bishop g5, we can play knight b6 with knight c4 ideas. I like black's game here. I really do not think black needs to be worried about white's attack on the king side of the board, and I think black has nice counterplay. And black actually performs pretty well in this position. So that covers a3. The other option is e5. Looking to immediately break through in the center of the board. And in this situation, Kasparov went to d takes e5, followed by knight fd7. If you look at this position first glance, it may seem as if black is in some trouble, especially after queen h5. It seems as if white has huge attacking chances, but if black is well prepared, I think black is just fine here. Kasparov went to the move, bishop c5, looking to pin the knight to the king on g1. And after bishop e3, trade off, play knight c6, really attacking the bishop on d4 and also the pawn on e5. And after a move like rook f4, we can trade off again play queen b6, again pinning the rook to the king on g1, and I think black is completely fine here. I'd probably say that the position is roughly even. Eventually, black will want to play knight c5, trade off that strong bishop on b3, and have an endgame with a bishop versus knight. So that covers the move f4. The other option is queen f3. And really with queen f3, white is wanting to play e5, attacking our knight on f6, 
while also attacking the rook on a8. However, here we can play queen b6. There's two options here for black, one being queen c7 and one being queen b6. Now, most grandmasters, including Kasparov, usually go to queen c7. However, most grandmasters, Kasparov included, perform a lot better with queen b6 and after bishop e3, playing queen b7. We reroute the queen to b6 to b7 and put some pressure on that pawn on e4. Again, we have b4 ideas. And after queen g3, many people, including myself, would probably want to play a move like king f8 or rook g1. Just try to hold on to that g7 pawn. But again, in the Nador defense, as mentioned in the first video, we can't just sit around. We have to play attacking chess. This opening only works if black plays for the win. And here Kasparov goes to the move b4. Kasparov really likes this move, and I do too. Playing b4, not really worried about this g7 pawn, but just attacking that knight on c3. And following knight a4, now we see knight b d7. And here white could take on g7, but after rook g8, followed by queen takes e4, I just think that black has too much counterplay here, and I actually think that black has a much better position. So following knight bd7, usually you'll see white play f3, looking to just solidify that pawn on e4. However, notice that in the Sozin attack, one of the main ideas is to play f4, followed by f5 or e5, and really by playing f3, white kind of diminishes all attacking chances. So here Kasparov plays castles, and black is doing just fine here. I like black's game. So look guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson on how to best play the Nidorf defense. Kasparov was easily the best to ever do it, so playing the opening just like he did can only improve results. And I also recommend checking some of his games out. They're both informative and entertaining. And in terms of the opening itself and opening theory, this is only one video in our four-part series. So if you guys want to learn more about his go-to variations, I'll leave the other videos in the description below. As always, I'm wishing y'all a great day. Love you guys. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.